himself. And I said, Abraham, I am sorry that I have said and done things that make you feel like you can't make a mistake. I am sorry that I have made you feel bad about the magnificent person that you are. Because the truth is, there isn't a single thing bad about you. The truth is, is God thought you up. In fact, God thought up. He said, like, who do I want to have as my very best friend in the whole world? Who's exciting? Who's amazing? And he thought up a person, and that person was each one of us. Each one of us was his desire for a friendship with someone magnificent. Right? His desire for friendship with a magnificent being is why you became you. That's who we are. That's who we are. And we have been hurt and wounded and lost sight of who we truly are. And that unworthiness has become an identity that is a lens that's following us through all the territories of our lives. And so I want to stand in the place of the people, and there's probably been many, who have said and done things that have caused you to feel unworthy. And I want to say to you, I am sorry. On behalf of all of humanity that has interacted with you in ways that were unjust, unkind, unloving, and less than what you deserve, I am sorry. I am sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't recognize and know the magnificence that you are. I am sorry that humanity has used you for their own gain. I'm sorry that I have manipulated and humanity has manipulated to get from you what we thought we needed. I'm sorry for the very mindset that has crushed you and pushed on you and caused you to think anything less about yourself than you truly are. And I ask for your forgiveness on behalf of humanity. I stand with Christ asking for you to forgive the hurt that has caused the hurt in your life. Because Christ said, I will bear it all. And we get to bear each other's burdens and then have them shifted. And I think the Lord wants to do a supernatural thing with us today, which is to give us a trade. You know how when you're bankrupt, like, right? You're bankrupt in Monopoly and you're like out, and then you can just like get a loan from the bank. <laughs> And you go, I'd like to get a loan. And it can turn the tide of the game. Anybody been in a game where somebody got a loan and it turned the whole game? I have. No, it never happens. It happens. It happened to me twice. No, because you have to mortgage your properties and then well, to get them back, you have to pay extra okay. and you can't ever. Well, at some point, the analogy breaks down. I know. But my point is this. When you realize that the entire board and all the money is yours to begin with, it's a game changer. <laughs> when you realize that each of the territories of your life are meant to prove to you your magnificence. They're not meant to crush you. They're not meant to be burdens for you to bear. bear. They're not meant to be the negative things that you just carry through life. Every territory of your life is meant to prove to you your own magnificence. Isn't, and if it's not, if it's not, then we get to go to the Lord and go, okay, why not? Why are you not proving my magnificence here? What do you need to do to get me to see my magnificence in this place? What do you need? Because that's his, it's his job. It's not our job to learn how to hear him well. Did you, it's not our job. It's his job. My kids do not have to raise themselves. Thank goodness. They don't have to teach themselves. 
And I told Abraham, I said, honey, learning is like learning how to tie your shoes. Nobody's upset you don't know how to do it for the first 500 times. Nobody's upset. Everybody's excited that you learned to hold the loop right. Everyone's excited that you learned to, you know, however you learn how to tie your, I mean, I'm assuming everyone here, you know how to tie your shoes, right? I don't want to shame anyone for not, yeah. I say that because, right, we all learn how to tie our shoes. And nobody was wrong for figuring it out. That's the beauty of our lives. We're not wrong for figuring it out. We get to get out of this mentality that every mistake is some big, huge cost and start to realize that God's got it in the budget for us to learn how to be magnificent. He has it in the budget for our marriages to become magnificent, for our parenting to become magnificent, for our businesses to become an expression of the kingdom of God and goodness in the earth. He's got it in the budget. And we cannot be this and magnificent at the same time. We have to let go of the unworthiness and let the Lord utterly prove to us our magnificence and utterly prove to us how powerful we are. So if we were to shift a couple of these statements, what would the, okay, let's do it this way. Oh, yay, okay, we'll do it this way. If the Lord were to um, highlight something in today's message that he really wants to speak to you that encourages you, um, take a card out of your bucket and just write that one thing down. And it may not actually have anything to do with anything I said, because that's the beauty of hosting a space with him, is that it's not about what I'm sharing, it's about what he's doing in your life. So go ahead and take a, a note card out of the bucket and write for yourself. You're not going to have to share it, but if you would like to share, we'll just take a moment and listen to the Lord and go, Lord, what encouragement are you wanting to give to me tonight? Maybe about the message. We'll see. Can you grab me water? Yeah. Okay, thanks. While you're thinking and processing and writing, I'm going to share this one last little bit because I feel the Lord going, don't forget that I wanted you to share that one piece and I don't actually fully understand why, but I'm going to share it. When Greg and I were first discovering that Darby was autistic and that things were going to be different, you know, that we had a different growing up than we had initially planned and we had no idea how to do it, I said to the Lord, how do I do, th how do, I do this? Because I don't know like, how to parent an autistic child, what they're capable of. I don't want her to become a selfish brat who's unlivable, you know? Like, I, I, but I don't, I, don't know, I don't know how to train her. I don't know how to help her be safe. I don't, know, I don't know what's the autism and what's normal kid behavior. And so the Lord said, there's three things I want you to teach Darby. He said, I want you to teach her to stop when you say stop. And he said, and we'll play a game. We'll have her be doing stuff. And then you say, stop. And then you have her freeze. And she does stop. And he goes, and that'll, she'll know how to stop when you say stop. And he said, teach her how to come when you call her and make that a game. And he said, so you just let her play. And then you call her name. And then you say, Darby. And then she has to come running to you right away. And so that was the second thing. that he. And so we played that game. And she learned how to come running to me when I called her name. And um, uh, so it was stop, and it was come. And then he said, the third thing is listen. Teach her how to listen when you say, listen, because then you're going to say something after that, and you want her to hear you. And that was a big challenge, because she didn't own herself. She didn't see herself as Darby. So sometimes when you gave her an instruction, she didn't know who you were giving it to. And so she would just go on. And so it was important for her to learn something that would catch her attention. And so I would teach her how to listen. And so we would play these games. And he said, these are the th th this is all you need to know how to do to parent her at this stage. That's it. These three things. Teach her how to stop. Teach her how to come. Teach her how to listen. When you say listen. That she'll like, actually know that you're telling her something. And he said, by the way, Ange, for the next decade, 
that's all you need to know with me. He goes, it's that simple. He goes, you're trying to like solve the world's problems. You're trying to figure out your marriage. You're trying to figure out like how to do this and what about finances and what about business and what about your career and what about this? And he goes, this is how simple this is. He goes, just if I, if I say stop, stop. If I tell you to come, come. And if I say listen to the next thing I'm going to say, just listen to the next thing I'm going to say. He goes, if we just get those three things down, we will cover about 95% of your life. I was like, that seems super, super simple. He goes, that's the simple life, live with me. It's just so simple and joyful and good. Okay, so anyone wanna share what they wrote down as what they feel like the Lord is encouraging them in the message tonight? Yep. Um, when you were telling the story about Abraham and you just asked what's going on, that like, I felt, I feel like a bunch of problems are already solved just thinking about asking that question. <laughs> like, why didn't I think of that? So, like, we, know. you know, like we've been having some, you know, we have two year old twins, you know, so there's trouble in that, at that time, there's this and that. And like, when my will is like, you, like, I just want them to listen so bad that I become a person that I'm not, you know? And yes. like, there's these things that happen. I'm like, what is going on with me that I can't just be whatever, patient, what, loving at this moment. But just asking like, oh, what's, go like asking the Lord what's going on in whatever child it may be at the moment. Like, <laughs> it just, it's like a, it's like an aha moment. Like, of course I need to partner more with the Holy Spirit. Like, why didn't I think of that before? You know, it seems I so know. obvious because I do it in other areas of my life, but then... No, seriously. Anyway, it's, it's just, like, I don't know why it's, it's so simple, I learn but... I <laughs> over and over and over again. I go, yeah. wow, I learned this in parenting, but I totally forgot it in marriage. Like, you know, yeah. it's like, what's, what's going on? What's going on? Yeah. I see what's happening. What's going on? It's so good. Yeah, I'm totally with you. I have... I, I learn it new over and over and over again. So good. Yay. Okay. Who else? That's so fun. It was that good, babe. <laughs> well, people might be still processing too. Mm -hmm. And really not wanting to share certain things. So that's perfectly great. It is perfectly great. Are you going to say it anyway? Is there just one more? I have been praying a lot about my relationship with my daughter because mm -hmm. we're headed into that normal mother-daughter stage of life. And, um, and this was a big aha because um, I wrote at the very beginning, Lord, what's going on? Um, and I felt him say, you treat her like she's your abuser. You're the victim of her. And so oh. she has to live with feeling like an abuser around you and the negativity of that and the shame of that. <clears throat> and actually, mm. joy and freedom are, are magnets that will draw her to you. You're trying to, like, trying to get her to you, but joy and freedom are like magnetic. And I just felt her, like, like, or I saw a picture of her just like running to me. Oh, it's so good. So that's the instead. Yay! That's really good. Anyone else? So if in this week you discover that there are alliances and partnerships that you are uncomfortable with, when you find yourself behaving in a way that you go, I'm not sure that this is how God made me, here's the beautiful thing that you can do that's so simple, is you can just say, you know what, thank you impatience, thank you anger, thank you whatever it is, addiction, 
Thank you for attempting to help me so far, but I am discovering I no longer need you, and you don't have to be here anymore. It is a simple, people become, they want to become so aggressive about the very behaviors that made them survive to hear that there's no honor for the journey and there's no honor for the pain that has caused that behavior to become your coping mechanism. And I feel the Lord honoring our journeys and honoring the pain that brought us to certain places and us being able to sweetly and gently step into something new. And the love that ever overcomes this unworthiness is the love that no longer needs another person to respond a certain way in response to my love. Love that no longer needs to manipulate the outcome is the kind of love that's really free. And if you are not experiencing that level of love for your loved ones, totally get it, I'm learning too, then God wants to love you so much that you come into the freedom that you are able to operate out of that kind of love. It's not something lacking, it's an invitation to something more. So that we no longer have to control others to make our own world safe. I know, right? That does not mean that we are at the mercy of other people's woundedness. It doesn't mean that we have to live within the boundaries of other people's woundedness. Because we do get to have the freedom where we get to say, I don't live in a, in a place that is unlivable. We get to do that. That is a powerful statement. Here is the life that I'm now living, and here's what gets to be in these spaces, and I will learn to do that, and I give you the freedom to learn your own journey as well. Okay, so I didn't know how that was going to go, but it was unexpected. <laughs> hey, and I'm on time. Yay. So we're going to invite the kids back. Um, you will get them, Dan? Thanks. What I would love for everyone to do is just take a moment and I just feel the Lord just going, let me just breathe joy into these spaces. Like joy and light and hope, hope restored. Because he is so moving the stickers from this place, you know, over to here. Places that we've given up on in our lives. Long-term addictions, long-term struggles, long-term relationships that have been such a struggle. The Lord is, he's shifting and he's moving. I don't know, if there's something happened in the earth just this last week. I don't know how many of you felt it. Something happened where new boundary lines were drawn. I don't even know what that means. But things were shifting in the spirit. And, and, and the Lord is going, I, I need you to, to not just want the spaces that are already part of your life, I, I want you to expand your vision even bigger. Before you've even won the territories that you already have, I want you to think bigger. Not fun, think bigger. Have your hope restored about what it means to be magnificent in the earth. So let's just, um, let's just, let's just pray over ourselves because Jesus is in us. And so Jesus himself is in our hands. So would you just put your hands on yourself in any way that feels comfortable? Um, or you don't have to if you feel uncomfortable, but I'm just going to invite you to do that. And just let Jesus be your hands. And so Jesus, we receive from you the joy and the healing and the love and the affirmation that you came to tell us how worthy we are, not only to be loved, but how worthy we are to inherit the earth, how worthy we are to be champions, warriors, game changers in our own lives and in the earth. We say yes to the healing and the full restoration of the hurts that have occurred in our lives so that we can just run this week, just run this week in unexpected joy. Amen. Yay! Yay, yay, yay. Oh, thanks. That was nice. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Hooray! Okay, and so...
as we get to practice hearing from the Lord um, with each other and for each other, I would love one person who would like to volunteer and go, you know, I just, I, I would love to hear an encouraging word from the Lord. So who would that be? Who wants to raise